finally trying these out. Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm finally testing the Revolution Game of Thrones collab. So a couple of weeks ago, I had a really nice surprise. I did get this gifted by Revolution and I'm still to this day so grateful and shocked that they sent me all this. So in this video today, I will be doing a first impression on the Game of Thrones Mother of Dragon palette, which is so fiery, so saucy. I literally cannot wait to do a look with this. Not only that, I'm going to be testing out the sponge as well. This sponge applicator, it comes with a throne that I can sit on. Like, that's genius. And I've also got the Jet Black Renaissance eyeliner pen. I'm a big fan of the Renaissance is it Renaissance? Yeah, I am a big fan already of this eyeliner, so I cannot wait to try this out. I don't think it's gonna be any different. I think it's just the limited edition eyeliner. And finally, we have got the mascara to test out. Now, I'm very picky with my mascaras, so this must be a good one. I am still waiting on a few things from Shrek with iHeart Revolution. Hopefully that can come soon. So yeah, if you're interested to see how these products perform today and my opinion on them, then make sure you carry on watching, hit subscribe, join my Patreon if you like, I'll leave that down below. But yeah, without further ado. Well, let's get into the video. Okay, so first off, who is your favourite character on Game of Thrones and tell me why? Please do not say Joffrey. If you can say Joffrey, get out. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I love Jon Snow, cliche, Jon Snow all the way. As we are doing Mother of Dragons, I blimmin' love her too, so. So straight from the bat, the collection and everything, I'm gonna say they've executed very well. The only thing that I wasn't a bit sure on was that big giant matte palette. I just thought, it's not for me, so I'm gonna pop that into a giveaway for my Patreon because I just know I can't see myself using it. Yeah, sorry I won't be reviewing that. I just, realistically, I just don't see myself using it. Um, and I just don't wanna waste it, so yeah. But this palette, I'm drawn to. These shades, we've got 18 shades, we've got mattes, we've got shimmers in there. I'd say it's quite more on the matte range than the shimmer. You've got smoky shades, you've got warm red, red to brown tones, a yellow. Yeah, this is definitely on theme of the fire. I know a lot of people were saying this palette is very similar to the Forever Flawless Fire palette, was it? And I can definitely see the similarity, but I don't have that palette, so I don't need to worry about that. I can just enjoy this. But if you did have that palette, maybe you don't want to get this. But if you are a huge Game of Thrones fan, I'd say probably get this. But we haven't even tested it yet, so I don't know why I'm saying my verdict already. So yeah, we've got shade names, of course, relating to the Mother of Dragon, Khaleesi, Queen, Rebellious, Saddle, Persistence, Dragon, Dothraki, Blood, House Blackfire, Crow, Castle, Carl. So it's very on theme for the Mother of Dragon herself. I am gonna use one of my favorite eye primers today just because I'll, I'm testing this palette out and I do love the Beauty Bay Primer. I do have the Ultimate Eye Base, but just something hits different about this. I do also have the two other palettes as well, which came in the collection, which I will get myself around filming them. I just wanna take my time with it though, because the reason why I haven't filmed this collection straight away as soon as got it is because it's such a big collection. I do get overwhelmed and sometimes I just gotta sit back, breathe a little, carry on as normal and then come back to it. And also the fact I wanted to wait till House of Dragon was nearly finished so I can get really excited for this. So yeah, that's why I haven't filmed it straight away. But now I'm super excited. I can get myself into it. Where the hell do I start first? Do I start with the lightest? Do I start with the darkest? I don't know. So I think I'm gonna start off with, I'm thinking of blood. So this blood shade is a matte, it's a matte red. And these palettes are 12 pound by the way. So this is pigmented, I'd say it is a true red. It does take a bit of, a couple of coats to get that true red pigment. It's just something about red that, it's just a powerful color, isn't it? And you know what, that's, that's totally what Khaleesi was. She was a powerful woman, very persistent, especially with her dragons. These are the P. Louise brushes and Girls of Attitude brushes I'm working with at the minute. I am gonna smooth this out a bit, but I am gonna use an orange to hopefully blend this out. 
I'm thinking of mixing two shades together because I feel like this orange is a bit too neon right now. I don't want to use it. So I'm going to mix it in with a bit of Khaleesi, but mostly the orange. So doing that and a bit of that. I kind of wish in this palette had a white. I'm just thinking about Khaleesi's hair. It is that white color. That would have been cool. See how this blends out. I'm loving these shades together. I think I need to go into a yellow now. So I'm gonna use Persistence, this matte yellow. Take this yellow, I'm gonna bring it outwards. This matte yellow is working really nicely. I love that matte yellow. I'm gonna take more of that orange, that Rebellious shade, and just bring it into the crease more. Okay, so I do wanna give this look a bit of depth, so I'm gonna go into a black shade, which is Crow. I'm hoping this is a true black. Okay, so far that is a good black. Let's just see, I'm gonna use a bit of a fluffy brush for this, tapping once, cause I don't want a lot on, I just wanna use this shade to add a bit of depth, and see what I mean, that's added loads. So the pigment is there. I'm gonna use a smaller brush actually. Okay, so the black has gone a bit patchy there. This side is fine. I don't know whether it's because of my eyes at the minute, but hopefully you won't be able to see that when I have eyeliner on. Okay, it's gone a bit better now. Went a bit patchy, but it's okay now. I've also got the I Heart Revolution Blood Palette on the way. So look out for a video for that. Hopefully it'll be up way before Halloween. I've got five shimmers to choose from. We have the Dragonfire, which is this, which is stunning. We have Queen, which could also go. Love those two, might mix those two together. Then we have this Warrior down I was going to say downstairs. We have Warrior here. And that is a nice shimmer. It kind of looks like a satin to me. But I'm not using that today. Don't know why it took me just to say that. We have Dragon Egg in the corner here. Which actually could look nice too. And then we have the Iron Throne. Which also could look nice. So we have a lot of cohesive shimmers in here that we could choose. I am more drawn to these two at the minute with this look. I just think it'll pop more against with the dark shade. Do I wet this? Do I wet this? I don't know. I'm gonna use my finger first maybe, or do I use a brush? I'm just gonna use an Urban Decay brush. So I'm gonna go into Queen first. Let's see how this picks up. These might work better on the finger. That looks nice on the brush too. Let's see what it looks like wet. I'm gonna wet this. I just used my Conceal and Define Infinite Spray, which I need to get another one, it's banging. Can you tell the difference? This, is more, this looks more brighter when it's wet compared to the other side. So let me just try and match that up. And then I'm gonna go into Dragonfire here, the shimmer. The Dragonfire shade is a bit more pressed into the pan. Doesn't move as round as much as the Queen shade. Like I can feel the Queen shade lifting onto my finger, whereas the Dragonfire is more pressed hard into the pan. So I feel like you do need to work a bit with the Dragonfire shimmer. But, wow, it is really nice. I wouldn't pick too much up because it can be texturing on your eye. I forgot to mention this dragon is also a shimmer. How nice is that? I'm gonna pull that dragon shade a bit in the inner corner. This eyeliner here, so I am a huge fan of the Renaissance eyeliner already. 
I don't know if I'm butchering that. I feel like I am. I've got this one here. So this is what it looks like. And this is limited edition. It is five pounds, this eyeliner. Now, I am picky with my eyeliner. So I'm hoping it is the same. Ooh, I like the feel of it. It feels quite matte silicone-y. This is what it looks like. It's got a really nice thin nib. One way to find out. Let's see if this is good. I mean, it's just going to be the same, isn't it? And we're back. So, my final verdict on that eyeliner. A decent eyeliner, bit stiff, bit watery. I think it's good just because I've just first opened it though. Yeah, it works exactly the same as the last one. Okay, let's try out this throne sponge. So, this is six pounds, I think it is. Let me just check. Yes, it is six pounds. The Game of Thrones Dragon Egg, egg Blender. We've got the throne. We've got the egg. This is so adorable. Definitely not my aesthetic at all because <laughs> um, everything is just like pink in my room. But I can appreciate the idea that has gone behind this. It's genius. Um, but yeah, let's go wet it. Let's see how big it goes. So for a comparison, this is my favourite sponge along with the Coco Marshmallow sponge, which is this one. Huge. I have wet these. Uh, this is literally 80p from Shein. I absolutely love it. So we're going to compare the size difference, the softness, because at the end of the day, this is six pound and this is 80p. So I just want to know, is it gimmicky or is it actually practical? So this is how big it is. It is looking quite juicy and big. I say the Shein is a lot spongy and softer, whereas the Revolution one is soft, but is firm against that sponge. That doesn't mean it's better, I'm just sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to wring all the wetness out. That doesn't mean it's better or anything. Uh, I'm just telling you what the texture is like. So foundation I'm going to use is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation Shade Neutral Sand. I'm going to test this with the sponge. Okay, let's, let's give this a go. I was just testing the firmness. I feel like this is a bit too wet. Probably should have waited till it is a bit dry. Oh, and also I did go in my Fenty primer. This is the Pro Filter Primer. I feel like it might go softer over time if I'm picking it up quite frequently, but straight away the Shein one was soft anyway. I do feel myself pouncing myself quite hard, whereas if I use this one, it's very softer. So yeah, I would say it is quite on the hard sponge side. It's okay though, it's doing the job. Would I repurchase? That is the answer. Probably not, just because I can get a decent sponge for 80p. Like, you can't turn down 80p, can you? I love the idea of it. I love the theming. And if you are hardcore Game of Thrones, then yeah, definitely sure. But for me personally, if I can just get a decent sponge that I really do enjoy for 80p, I think I'm just gonna stick with that. Um, but yeah. A good reason to have this throne it's not gonna make all your makeup rubby <laughs> from the beauty blender, from the sponge. But I'm back. I just wanna test the sponge with a blusher. So this is a liquid blush in the shade Apricot Hot by Made by Mitchell. I just wanna see how this sponge works with another product. Okay, I'm liking, I might even like this better with my blush. Because I like to have different sponges for different products. Like I like to have a makeup sponge for my foundation. And I like to use a different sponge for liquid blushes. So this could be the one for liquid blushes. Because it's not too soft and it won't move the product everywhere. Um, whereas this one is very soft and it spreads out a lot more quicker. Okay, I was just messing around off camera with blushes and everything for a blush topper. I don't normally do this, but I have gone in with the Rebellious shade and just used it a bit as a blush and I'm here for it. I don't normally do that with eyeshadow. Um, yeah, I like that because it goes with the eyeshadow automatically. So 
Yeah. Okay, so I got sidetracked. We are here for the mascara now. I struggle with mascaras. I struggle. I don't know what it is, but my lashes are just not it. It's why I normally put on lashes on after. I kind of wish I didn't put the eyeliner on because you're not going to see the mascara in action. But let's just hope for the best. So I'm just going to read what this mascara claims to do. So the mascara is eight pounds. It says it is a lifting mascara. Jet black formula brings ultimate length, volume for your lashes. So lift, length, volume, jet black. The four things we're looking for in this mascara. Let's go. So this is mascara. I do like the embossed dragon scaling on it. And oh, it came out there. That is the wand. So it is straight. Um, looks quite fluffy. So I'm going in for another coat. I normally just go in with loads of coats until I get my desired amount. Um, so straight away from the bat, it's separating my lashes. Now it didn't say it was going to do that, but it is doing that. It's not clumping them together, which is good. I wouldn't say it's a volumizing. I'd definitely say it's separating. It has a bit of a lift and it's given them um, some length. Uh, it is a decent mascara. It is, it is an all right mascara. The way I can tell is when I look through the mirror, I can see my lashes lifting up. Sometimes I just have straight lashes and I can definitely tell my lashes are lifted. So yeah. Now this is my good lash. <laughs> uh, I should have started with my good, good lash. Does anyone else have a good lash? Bad lash, good lash. I'm liking this mascara. I'm preferring it over the Real Love mascara. I did struggle with this a bit. Um, I love the I Heart Revolution Coconut Mascara. That's a good, nice, natural one. I'd say this isn't a natural one. I say it does have volume, but it's not massively volumizing. But it definitely does lift and it does give you separated lashes and probably a bit of length too, so. It's easy to use. I'm finding the applicator easy to use. I'm not poking my eye out. It's not too big. Whereas the Real Love one, I did find myself, it was a very chunky wand. And I struggle with chunky ones because I end up poking my eye out. And we're back. I have got a fiery, ready lippy on. So before I get into my final verdict, I will tell you what's on my lips because I will forget and I have a feeling someone might ask. I've got the MAC Lip Liner shade so my nose is so itchy. I've got a spot inside my nose. I'm not picking it, but it's absolutely killing me. And I've got a bit of a bruise. So the lip liner I'm using is the MAC Lip Liner shade Saw, Sour. Saw, I think it's Saw. Yeah, Saw. I've got that on. And then I've got the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Amsterdam. Fun fact, I actually won this from the festival I went this year, Creamfields Festival. I won this lipstick. Very happy about that. First time using it, really liking it. I'm overall very happy with this palette so far. First impressions, the shades that I've used worked absolutely brilliantly. They blended really nicely. The two shimmers I used were nice. This black, it's a decent black. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a true full opacity black, but it's a decent black. It's easy to work with. I wish there's a mountain here to match her white striking hair. Because I've only used it once, I don't have a lot to say about it, other than the fact that the shades that I've used worked really nice, had no issues. The black was a bit patchy this side. That could be me just having a bad eye day, I don't know. Yeah, all in all, first impressions, I'm happy with it. This mascara I'm surprised about because I, like I said before, I am picky with my mascaras and it's doing everything except for the volumizing. It's doing the length, it's doing the lift, it's doing the separation and it didn't even claim to say that. But yeah, I just don't think it volumizes, that's it. But it's still a good mascara. I'd say it's a good, nice, separating, lifting mascara for a natural lash. This one is a good applicator. Not too big, not too small. It is a bit runny there. Just scrape it off. Um, yeah, all in all, it's all right mascara. Yeah, it's a good sponge. It's not my favourite sponge I've used. I still prefer my ATP from Shein. Um, it's got a good firm to it to blend out liquid and cream blushes. I don't prefer it to use for my foundation. I do prefer something that's softer. 
that way it can spread the foundation more. This I do find I have to blend with it more for my foundation and that's why I prefer it for my liquid or cream blushes. What's an okay sponge? but I can live without it. But like I said, if you are a die-hard Game of Thrones fan, you're gonna love this, especially this. Like, people are so excited about this. Um, you're gonna love that. Thanks again to Revolution for gifting me this. I really do appreciate it. It makes, it just makes my heart full of excitement, but in no way, shape or form that does not reflect my opinion whatsoever. Even if it wasn't gifted, I'd still say the same thing. Um, I stick to my word. But yeah, do let me know. Have you picked any of the items from this collection? Have you got the Mother of Dragons? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments, let everyone know. And if you did like this video, do give a big thumbs up, which will help my channel out. And of course, if you don't wanna miss out on the two other palettes, which we've got The Winter Is Coming and The Free-Eyed Raven, Make sure you stick around for that to your notification bell on. And don't forget, if you'd like to join my Patreon as well, I'll leave that in the description box. I do a lot of updates on makeup palettes, swatches, update reviews on my palettes, like if I'm enjoying them still. All that information will be on my Patreon. That's what I do when I'm not filming, so yeah. But yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. Now every time watching this, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!